morning, everybody. It is Wednesday morning, uh, December 9th, 2020 at 5.56 a.m. This is the earliest I've ever done a morning prayer. Uh, this is also my father's birthday. It's his 66th birthday. So I want to say happy birthday, Dad. Um, I hope you enjoy the day wherever you may happen to go today. I have not spoken to him. He hasn't texted me back yet. He's probably sleeping in or oftentimes like me, he doesn't have his phone with him. So I'm sure that he'll get back to me soon today. Um, anyway, dad, happy birthday. I love you. So this is the earliest we've done morning prayer yet. The sun is not yet out. I was kind of wondering, I, I'll probably have to get up and, you know, turn the lights out. Uh, as the service wears on. But um, anyway, let's just take a few moments to kind of get ourselves into a prayerful place. Watch, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things which are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us sit in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, bring us to eternal life. Amen. Lord, open, the, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Alleluia. Our King and Savior now draws nigh. Come, let us adore him. Come, ring out our joy to the Lord. Hail the rock who saves us. Let us come before God giving thanks with songs. Let us hail the Lord. A mighty God is the Lord, a great King above all gods, in whose hands are the depths of the earth, the heights of the mountains as well. The sea belongs to God who made it, and the dry land shaped by his hands. Come in, let us bow and bend low. Let us kneel before the God who made us. For this is our God, and we the people who belong to his pasture, the flock that is led by his hand. 
Oh, that today you would listen to God's voice, harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as on that day at Massa in the desert, when your ancestors put me to the test, when they tried me, though they saw my work. For forty years I was wearied of these people, and I said, Their hearts are astray. These people do not know my ways. Then I took an oath in my anger, never shall they enter my rest. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our King and Savior now draws nigh. Come, let us adore him. Psalm this morning will be Psalm 138. I'm going to read from the Grail Psalms. Um, I go back and forth oftentimes between this, the Book of Common Prayer Psalter and this one. I like them both. I, you know, I highly recommend if you haven't done so already, maybe some of you watching are big on the Psalms like I am. Um, recommend if you're not, look around and find a translation that you like. There are, there are, I don't know how exactly how many there are, but there are several I know of you can choose from. and um, Find one that, that fits for you, because the Psalms definitely fit you. If you're a human being, they definitely do. I thank you, Lord, with all my heart. You have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will bless you. I will adore before your holy temple. I thank you for your faithfulness and love, which excel all we ever knew of you. On the day I called, you answered. You increased the strength of my soul. All the rulers of the earth shall thank you when they hear the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the Lord's ways. How great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, yet looks on the lowly, and the haughty God knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of affliction, you give me life and frustrate my foes. You stretch out your hand and save me. Your hand will do all things for me. Your love, O Lord, is eternal. Discard not the work of your hand. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? 
and I said, here am I, send me. And he said, go and say to this people, keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. Make the mind of this people dull and stop their ears and shut their eyes so that they may not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and comprehend with their minds and turn and be healed. Then I said, how long, O Lord? And he said, until cities lie waste without inhabitant and houses without people and the land is utterly desolate until the Lord sends everyone far away and vast is the emptiness in the midst of the land. Even if a tenth part remain in it, it will be burned again, like a terebinth or an oak whose stump remains standing when it is felled. The holy seed is its stump. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have to say, that, to me, is one bleak sounding reading morning I have to say <laughs> with things that have been going on with me lately I don't know what that says but it feels very very bleak but you know this is not a time really I mean it's not a time for bleak it's time for for bleakness because we're waiting for the coming of the Lord for his birth so we're simultaneously with him and without him. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that that's a very good paradigm for my life right now, anyway. We have each other. God's with us and in us and through us. We have each other as we wait, hopefully with joy. But also with sadness because of this season right now. Like I said yesterday, over in the past seven days, over 15,000 people have perished from coronavirus. So there's a lot of sadness going on right now. A lot of bleakness going on right now absolutely it's part of the season in a way that it hasn't been in recent human memory or you know um, at least not in this generation you know so and we've had other trials and tribulations certainly but this is definitely one for the books but God's with us and we have each other that's very important to remember even if you don't feel it, because I don't feel it. Let me tell you something, comes and goes, comes and goes. But I, I, but I pray, and I meditate, and I love, and I do this here with you guys. That's going to be the canticle after the first reading. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Sylvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, as is right, because your faith is growing abundantly, and the love of every one of you for another, for one another, is increasing. Therefore, we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith during all your persecutions and the afflictions that you are enduring. This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God, and it's intended to make you worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you are also suffering. 
For it is indeed just of God to repay with affliction those who afflict you, and to give relief to the afflicted as well as to us, when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. These will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction, separated from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might. When he comes to be glorified by his saints and to be marveled at on that day among you, among all who have believed, because our testimony to you was believed. To this end, we always pray for you, asking that our God will make you worthy of his call and will fulfill by his power every good resolve and work of faith so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and its rider has he hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my savior. This is my God, and I will praise him, the God of my people, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. Yahweh is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome and renowned and worker of wonders? You stretched forth your right hand. The earth swallowed them up. With your constant love, you led the people you redeemed. With your might, you brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the mount of your possession, the resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord, the sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Make your chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, 
your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thought I remember colics in here for all days of the week, but I must be misremembering. It's only certain days. Uh, I see Sundays, Fridays, and Saturdays. I thought there was one for two. Maybe it's an evening prayer. I'm not sure. I have to look through. But anyway, because I like the collect section of the prayer book. I really do. I always add oftentimes several, oftentimes more. Sometimes, some days I do them all, just depending on how I'm feeling, you know, depending on what's needed. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when the night comes, rejoice to give thanks, give you thanks, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit. That in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In addition, of course, to the people that I'm praying for this morning, that I remember in my prayers, the names of my friends and brothers and sisters, that, uh, that even though some of those that I can't technically call friends in the traditional sense, but you know, they still are like my friend and brother in Christ, or brother and sister in Christ, you know. Um, as I go back and forth in that, it's a very interesting thing, and I'll, I'll just touch on that just briefly, I guess, because the Lord is kind of moving me to do that. I mean, there are some people that, sometimes it's hard really, right, to call someone a friend if they don't consider you a friend, right? I think we can both, or at least we can, we can probably all um, come, to, come to that agreement, that, that it's challenging, at least. Um, my own ability to do that, sometimes with the same person, varies day by day. Um, sometimes it's easier for me to call somebody a brother in Christ and so, you know, on one day and then the next day I, I may refer to them more intimately as a friend. It just depends. I'm aware of the, I don't know if I want to say, well, it is waxing and waning of love that really has nothing to do with them, but has everything to do with me. Um, has to do with how secure or insecure I'm feeling on any given day. Whether I 
feel um, embarrassed or invalidated by a lack of reciprocity in feeling and in, in love really in love you know and I feel a lot of that right now but I feel a lot of that right now and, and, and my reaction to it again goes back and forth from severe to, to more at peace to, you know it, it's it's a roller coaster I want you to know That I'm not somebody who likes to lose their cool. I consider it to be, you know, to me it's it's a it's something of a personal embarrassment to lose my cool. Even if I look good doing it or whatever, if I tell somebody off and it really, you know what I mean? It, it's for me it doesn't represent the ideal. It re represents something other than that I won't go I won't define it beyond that because I mean it's complex you know what I mean I've come to learn that there is a time to lose your cool that we're supposed to lose our cool that it's appropriate it's meat and right for us to lose our cool you know what I mean I mean think about it there's there's not you shouldn't you know if something like I'm gonna use the Holocaust because it's an extreme example you know but there's a there's a situation where we shouldn't just be like yeah, that was really bad, you know, like, I mean, like, there should be some kind of outrage, there should be some, you know what I mean? Some Bible waving there, some, some brandishing of something, right? We should be, we should have outrage about that, it shouldn't just be, it should be, you know, it should be commensurate with it, with the severity of the event, right? Now, granted, of course, it's been a very long time, you know what I mean? On, and to be to be quite honest, I hope people are not, you know what I mean, even though there are people that are waking up every day like it just happened because, you know, I don't know, you know, because of some connection to it, whether literally or spiritually. But sometimes that's not good, you know, at the same time. I mean, you do want to try, you don't want to necessarily live in that space. I Immediately, who, who came to my mind is John Walsh. You all know John Walsh is, uh, does that show. I don't know if it's still on, uh, America's Most Wanted, you know. And, of course, um, notice, if you know who he is, you will, of course, know his son, Adam Walsh, uh, was abducted and murdered in the early 80s sometime, and that's how he got kind of in that position that he is in, you know, doing, doing the, you know, the crime show, and, um, and advocating for victims of, you know, parents with uh, deceased children and, and, and all that. Um, but I'll never forget, a couple of years ago, not even that long ago, Especially considering when his child was taken from him, which I, I'm not even going to, I'm going to refrain from trying to qualify appropriate feelings on that, really, about that. I, I mean, I'm, I'm about to do it right now because I'm going to make a comment directly related to it, but I'm trying to tread lightly because beyond this, I have the utmost respect and I'm not trying to, I don't know what it's like. I don't know what it's like. So, um... But there was an episode of America's Most Wanted. And uh, so there's a scene. It's kind of funny. You know what I mean? It was there, there's a scene where they capture a pedophile. 
You know what I mean? The police do this. One of those, remember for a while they were doing that thing on TV where like the cop would pretend to be a kid and then they would do the meeting, but like the, the pedophile would show up and then they'd have a camera crew. Remember all that stuff? You know what I mean? Which is pretty like, it, you can't admit it's, it's, it's definitely entertaining. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's kind of, it's not that, I don't know. It, it, it's, anyway, here's the thing. So John, they tackle this guy or whatever, and John Walsh is like, yeah, buddy, you're going to get it now. And uh, like all this stuff. I mean, it was like, it was pretty heavy handed. It was like, the, immediately I saw that he was kind of, you know, he was reacting to this guy who he didn't know, and he had no personal investment in this guy's crimes, except for what it was doing is that was Adam's killer on the ground, you see. Even though Adam's killers, I think, I think he was executed quite a long time ago. But that reaction only makes sense when we see it as what was happening there. Was, that was Adam's killer on the ground. And he was, you know, every, I think every time he, he, he is on that show and he's doing that, he's trying to, I don't want to say he hasn't gotten closure or let it go because I don't know what he's done. I don't know. But I can definitely tell you he's reliving it. He's reliving something, and I, I can't say, you know, I can't say I would do any better. I would hope, but here's the thing. This is why I say, this is the, why, the whole point of me bringing this up right now, is that, yes, it deserves that kind of severity, but I don't know, I thought to myself, I don't know that I'd want to be in his position in life with that kind of anger over that event from a very long time ago because that is obviously somebody that's still experiencing a lot of pain and resentment that they, they have not kind of healed as much from this as I would hope that I would heal after that. Um, but yet, you know, John is, I mean, at the same time, you can't deny that. John's unrest and angst and pain from losing a child, which is not all that dissimilar from waiting for something to come tie this back to Advent. Um, has, has been good. That's exactly what God wanted. You know, it's very hard for us a lot of times to know, I'll tell you right now, what's been good, what, what's good, and what's not. I mean, you know, I, I so oftentimes I, I say it and then I'm back in my mind, I'm like, well, you know, you don't really know that. I mean, because the fact that, you know, God's always doing stuff. I was about to say that sometimes the safest thing to say is silence. And yet, sometimes that is the most contemptible thing, like I just said, with the Holocaust and with John Locke, you know what I mean? us. That's the best we can hope for. So, let's remember, going back to the prayers of the people here, basically, let's remember in this time of waiting, in this time of angst, in this time of loss, which pain is a part. I don't think I've ever associated Advent with pain, the pain of waiting like I have this year. And that's a pretty interesting take to take on it. So let's remember, because it is, you know, actually it's, think about it. No, I mean, think about it. Kids, we forget, 
what it's like being a kid, but kids waiting for Christmas. It, it, you, I mean, if you kind of remember, it, it was kind of painful a little bit. A little, in a way. It's probably hard for, you know what I mean? Just like we do, just like all adults do to, ch to the kids' problems, which is simultaneously good and bad, is we tend to diminish them. You know, it's good because we realize that, hey, you know what, it's not the end of the world. But sometimes it's like we need to remember it's kind of the end of the world to the kid. You know what I mean? Like, for example, I mean, you don't want to have that. You don't want to be that so disconnected with it, with, with those problems that, you know, you, your kid ends up committing suicide because they were overwhelmed. But you were able to see past their problems. But you weren't able to see that they were close to doing something dangerous or something like that. You know what I mean? You don't want to be that disconnected from it. You know what I mean? Because... You know, when you're dealing with someone whose problems, well, I guess what I'm trying to say, not the most articulately, is that it's important to take, as, take people's problems as seriously as they take them, while also being able to see, hopefully, beyond them. But not to, not to regard them as any less important or urgent. And that's hard to do. I mean, that's the ideal. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm telling you an ideal. I'm trying to, you know, how we live that out, it varies. So, I'm gonna, I wanna remember the, pe the people with coronavirus right now, which this is my first day where I can technically go out. I gotta tell you, within the last two days though, I got a cold now. I haven't even been out of the house and I have a cold. The only thing I've done is touch mail when I'm going down to the mailbox late at night to grab my mail. And I've got a cold. I have not even left the house except for that. What is that? I mean, keep that in mind, people. Keep that in mind. That's all I, I mean, that's it. I've been in the house for 10 days. The only time I've gone out is to go and grab mail out of my mailbox. And I somehow got a cold. I haven't had contact with people. Oh, and food was dropped off at my door uh, uh, twice at my house. So, but I didn't have contact with people. I didn't even come within six feet of people. Did not even that. But I touched, I brought stuff into my house that had uh, obviously some kind of, you know, cold, cold thing on it. I'm hoping that's what it was. Honestly, I'll be honest with you. I'm hoping that that's what it was because, you know, the, the, the coronavirus, when I got it, the symptoms were identical to a cold. The only thing that tipped me off, like I've said before, was all of a sudden, I hate saying like the lack of taste. Like, I don't think it's very funny. <laughs> yeah, it's a complete lack of taste. But like I have to defend, you know, I don't, oh God. Anyway, is right. You know what's really funny? I'm going to tell you this the other day. <laughs> I'm not a prickly person by any means, but for some reason, I think the Lord has been punking me with this like, complete lack of taste thing because I was talking to, this was like last week sometime, I was talking to a healthcare worker or something like that on the phone about the coronavirus thing. And I said that, you know, it described my symptoms and I explained that I had a, a um, she's like, uh, what'd she say? The way she said it was just so, it was funny. But I was like, I was, I, I recognized the humor and yet I was somehow a little bit indignant at the same time, which is so crazy. But she's like, oh, that complete lack of taste that it's going to last for a while. And like the way the tone in her voice, I was like, well, no, it's already gone. I, you know, I was like, as if, as if like, yeah, give me a break. Anyway, so like, you know, weird, weird. And it's all... The Lord screwing with me is what it is. And it's, it's totally, you know, it's like, I knew that she didn't, I knew that she meant it entirely as she meant it, like this. But the Lord was making me hear it and insist that I hear it and feel it as if she was talking about my personal taste and style. You know what I mean? It's that. Simultaneously making me hear it as that, but also know that it is not that. Just as a little, like, you know, a little, like, like that kind of thing. It's very, it's weird. I don't, you know, I, I cannot tell you how unusual I feel saying that 
the people that don't, you know, to the people that possibly don't know what I'm talking about from personal experience, because it sounds, you know, we've all seen those, char have you ever seen, you know, charismatics talk about their religion, you know, before you've had a religious experience, people talk about their experience of God, and you're just like looking at them like, yeah, oh, that, that's, gee, that's great, but you just like, don't get it. At the minimum, like, you don't get it, and at the worst, you're like, this guy is fucking crazy. Who, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, what, you know what I mean? It just looks nuts. It's something that's like, whatever it is, at the very minimum, you don't get. I can remember growing up in, you know, Episcopalians, you know, it depends now. It depends whether you go high church or low church. But, you know, a lot of times people are not comfortable praying off the script. And they're not comfortable using their body in worship. Um, and I come from both those traditions where I was not comfortable working off the script and definitely was not going to, even just putting my hands in the air to say the Our Father, I remember for years was like when people, if I was in a church, I can remember visiting churches where people did that, you know, did the sway, like, which I can do now, no pro, I mean, I don't even give it a second thought now, it's a, but I can remember a time where if I knew that that part of a service was coming up, I can remember knowing that, and I would have anxiety about it. Like, I mean, it was the most uncomfortable thing being around a bunch of people that were going to maybe, like, put their hands on my head and pray over me or something like that. It was like, uh, you know. And then you have this experience of God, you know, you have these experiences of God. I can, you know, every day is like Damascus Road for me. And that is not... I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. There's some shit every day. Especially lately. I wish there, I wish there was less shit. I wish, you know, hoo, hoo, hoo. Um, but I don't at the same time. Because, you know, the idea of God, if God, you know, and I tell God this too, and God already knows, but I, I feel like I gotta say it anyway, you know, Mr. Is explicit over here. Uh, I say that, um, you know, I, I don't want you to go away because the thought of like, Okay, you don't like this. You know, I, I get to talk to God every day. We have such like meaningful interaction. It's like I can touch, you know, God really. And like, do I want? Even though it is associated right now in my life with a lot of, of pain. I mean, and I'm talking about pain. I wish I could describe it. I wish I had words for it. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. It's a level of pain that at one point, when I had to go through it years ago, had me convinced I was possessed by the devil. And that's the truth. I thought, this kind of, these kinds of afflictions, these kinds of experiences, which Facebook seems to think I have schizophrenia because I've been seeing that in my... <laughs> In my, my news feed now, which is interesting because if you read M. Scott Peck, uh, who's written on this, uh, on, on demonic possession, and so basically spiritual matters, and he's also a psychiatrist, an army trained uh, physician, psychiatrist, MD, like a real psychiatrist, not like, you know, which means a lot to me. I'm like, MD, all right. <laughs> you know, um, no, but I used to have this thing where I was like, I, you know, when I went to therapy, I would. Nothing, nothing less than an, than an actual board-certified psychiatrist was, was enough for me. I was like, I'm not going to some NFT, whatever. Which is baloney, because I'll tell you right now, one of the guys in my prayers that I pray for right now is an MFT and a very awesome one of that. I mean, phew, that guy. Anyway, I digress. But that pain, though, that... You know, I now know, you know, is, is part, and the Bible's ripe with examples of, um, of people experiencing pain directly from God, not as, you know, an element of evil, but I'll tell you right now, just like when you have Montezuma's revenge, it feels evil, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's the same sort of thing, it, 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 it's painful, and it feels, you know what I mean? You don't, we don't associate, we associate God with love. We don't, you know what I mean? Even though we, re I've read a ton of times. I mean, like, I, I knew Jonah. You know that story. You know, but why ultimately did I see it as evil? Because that's the way God wanted me to see it at that time. And then he gave me eyes to see it differently later. 
So anyway, again, back to, I want to pray for people with coronavirus before we start the prayers of the people. Let's do that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we bring you the sick and ask you for comfort and healing. Please give comfort to those who are grieving. Give wisdom and energy to doctors and researchers and power to all nurses and doctors in this time of extreme stress. We pray for all those who are panicking. We pray for clear vision and peace in the midst of the storm. Make us grateful for each healthy day. Amen. my uh, prayer list in the other room. I'll be right back. So I invite you to bring your prayers with me before the Lord this morning. People that we're remembering, um, our friends and family, those who are sick, anyone, anybody. And also, again, I remind you that I would love to pray for you. If you would like, please email me or contact me on Facebook Messenger. My email address is jtc at acernet.org. Obviously, I mean, this may not be obvious to some of you, so I'm just going to say you don't even need to know me. I don't need to know you personally. You know, you don't need to introduce yourself. You can just put prayer request in the email and just say, you know, state your request. That's it. You don't need to, you know what I mean? Just feel free to do that. I would love. I'm going to be honest. I haven't received one yet. I haven't received one yet. So it would warm my heart, really. And I'll be honest with you. I don't, you know, especially with this quarantine going on and a lot of other circumstances, I don't really get a lot of contact right now with people. Uh, so... It would help me a lot too. I gotta tell you, it wouldn't just be for you. I would, it would, it would help me. You know, it would ease some of my loneliness because I, I admit I feel lonely a lot of times. You know, not as much as I could, but still a good amount. You know what I mean? I have to say, it's amazing sometimes how not lonely I am. But then I have these, mo you know. But when you're lonely, you're lonely. You know what I mean? Even if uh, you have 23 hours a day where you're not lonely. You have an hour of loneliness. It's it can feel like an eternity, and it can feel very. It can you know what I mean? You want it to stop immediately. It's not sometimes like we don't always look at it with with the perspective of well, I have twenty three other hours of not lonely. You know what I mean? It's like that hour of lonely is like ah. Uh. So anyway, so please email me jtc at acernet dot org or. Send it to me on Facebook Messenger. Follow me on Facebook. My Facebook is facebook.com forward slash JTCSA. JTCSA. Okay. Um, I, please pray with me this morning for these people. As I mentioned them, please, even if you don't know them, What do you do then if you don't know them? Well, I think you take yourself, what you feel inside, the you, the goodness, the intent that you have, and you just push it toward me. You push it toward God. That's what you do. That's what I do, anyway, because that's all we can do, right? I mean, I think the presence of good intent is enough. That's, all, that's what I mean. And add your own people in. So as I'm reading these names, you know, what you do is go 
yes, good, good, good for them. I want good for them. I want good for them. Let good things happen to them. Send your well wishes. Now, I'm not trying to tell people what to do, by the way. I'm trying to speak to people that maybe don't have experience of, of praying for people or knowing what they should do when I'm reading off a list of names, which I don't think is, honestly, I don't necessarily think that that's probably uh, a small amount of people out there, you know? It's not my experience. So, I remember Junior Irwin, The Repose of the Soul of Howard Conley, Kerry Connolly, Brian Connolly, Bernadette and Stephen Connolly, Stuart Packman, Eric Mosness. I love you, Eric. I hope you're doing all right, brother. Keegan Forbes, Michael Nold, Coulter Braden Myers. Richard Simmons, Clergy with Substance Abuse Issues. Jim White, Andrew Marmelstein, Dave Maloney, Fathers Pudota and Driscoll, Keith Watley, Jimmy Harder, Michael Zorns, Tony Buchetich, Ruben Padilla, Travis Carpenter, Kurt Berry, Larry Burdett, Laura and Lydia. Kyle Schofield. Janine and Mike Smith. Or Jones, sorry. Oh my gosh, that's... You know what? Oh, well, Mike Smith, too. Hey, there's a guy I need to actually add to my prayer list. Mike Smith, as well, who lives actually not that far from me. Whew. See, the Lord has, absolutely, you got it, brother. You got it. See, that's the Lord telling me to pray for Mike Smith right there. Not only just mentioned the name, but confirmed with me just now. Yeah, so that's awesome. I'm happy to do that. And I hope it's, I hope it's for good stuff, honestly, because, you know, man, whew, it's a tough season of Advent. All right. Uh, Janine and Mike Jones. T.J. Hostomsky. Actually, let me just interrupt real quick because I want to write down Mike Smith's name so that way I make sure that I don't forget it for later. And I also want to write down my friend Clifton Barrett, who, uh, oh, he is down there. Okay, I, good. I, I couldn't, all right, good. I talked to Clifton yesterday, and uh, Clifton, I love you, brother. Thank you for messaging me. You can do it. You can do it. Thank you for your kind words yesterday. That means a lot to me. I wish I could give you a hug right now. That's going to have to do for now, I guess. It's a good coronavirus social distancing hug. So Mike Smith will write down here. All right. Someone I don't want to kill that's on my prayer list. All right. <laughs> Probably because I'd say Mike can give you some reasons to want to kill him. I will say that, but you know, I haven't seen Mike in a while. So, you know, some people you can love them from a distance and it's great to get along fantastic. No, I hope you're doing all right, Mike. I hope you're doing all right. I hope you didn't get I gotten sick with anything like a lot of people have out there. I, like, I, you know. Oh uh, boy. Anyway, so let's move along here. TJ Hostomsky, Drunk Phil, June, Ann, Oliver, and Sam. Uh, Dad and Mom. Christine Baker, Repose of Her Soul. Lou and Gina Leach. Debbie Hawkins. The Great. I miss you, Debbie. Thinking about you a lot lately. Peter Steeler, 
Joshua and Kara. Danny Hudson. The Monks of St. Gregory's Abbey. Clifton Barrett. Rawl and Barbara Laborde. Now those two, oh, I miss those two a lot. They are pretty cool. They're back in Massachusetts. At least last I heard, anyway, unless they moved. We're at my old parish in, in uh, St. Luke's, Worcester. Pretty cool. Pretty cool couple. The Repose of the Soul of the Reverend Fred and Cheryl Merrick. Of course, I already added Mike Smith. And then compelled to say Clifton again. Clifton. Pray. You have experience with this. Sometimes it is. Sometimes, you know, an AA, they, sometimes people say to you, well, you got to do something different this time. It didn't work last time. you got to do something different because obviously something you're doing isn't going to work. I'm going to tell you, very few things will I say about AA is bullshit, but that's one of them right there. That's bullshit. Sometimes life is rife with examples of where, you know, quitting smoking is a perfect example. Okay, it has nothing to do with, now sometimes you can play around and sit there and tell yourself, oh, well, it worked this time because I used the mint instead of the gum. I mean, like, probably not. Usually, like, studies show, okay, that quitting smoking, like, t usually takes several attempts before you're finally successful. I personally, now, I'm not going to say I'm successful. That's, this is an AA thing, too. And I agree with that, definitely. I'm, I'm not going to say I'm successful. We don't know. I, you only, after I'm dead, I will look back and say I'm successful. I was successful. If I never picked up, a, you know what I mean, if I quit. But until, you know what I mean, I'm successful so far. I'm successful today, right now. I'm successful so far. Ultimately successful, who can say? Um, so, well, I kind of forgot, my, lost my train of thought there with that. But um, hopefully I've said enough. <laughs> if not, we'll pick it up again. Because I know that I was talking about a topic that I have given significant thought to and significant verbiage to on more than a few occasions. So I'm sure it'll, it'll come back again another time. Um, all right. Also, too... Uh, prayer for my dad's birthday today. Also, too, birthday and anniversary prayers. Uh, you can send those to me as well. Remember, email jtc at acernet.org or jtcsf on Facebook. All right, birthday and anniversary prayers uh, as part of the prayer request. I would love. I would love. I would love. You know? So what I do is pray. So, you know? Give me, give me more work to do that I love to do, and that, that, that's the fun stuff. It's actually that, really. So, um, and let, I was thinking, God, kind of imagine if the prayer list gets to be like an entire stand up hat, then, then what? To be like, be like dreading morning prayers, so like, oh, I'm gonna read that name list of like, <laughs> like 50 pages of names on it. I was thinking the other day what I would do if that happened. You know what I mean? Not likely to happen, I don't imagine. But I was thinking about, well, something led me to think about that. Like those, like those TV preachers that get those, like, you know, truckloads of prayer requests that, like, we know that most of them are throwing those away, unfortunately. But, like, if they did, how would they manage them? And I was thinking, how, what would I do? Hmm. I, I would, you'd have to have a team. You'd have to actually have a team of people praying. I mean, like, if you're really going to legitimately handle that. You know, you obviously, you know, you could not do that every day. I don't know. I mean, remember you might, you have to do a blank, like, you know, I don't know. But anyway, so that's how I thought of that. But woo. anyway, though, that, that might be, you know, 
starting to get to that problem would be kind of cool, though, because I don't really have anybody, like I said, emailing me, and I really appreciate that. So, anyway, Dad, I love you and happy birthday. And we're going to pray the prayer for birthdays on page 830 in the Book of Common Prayer, prayer number 50 for birthdays. My father's name is Alex. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant Alex as he begins his 66th year. Grant that he may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen his trust in your goodness all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation and preservation and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. St. Paul, pray for us. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, to thine eyes of mercy towards us, and after this our exile. Show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus, O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Go in peace and have a blessed, wonderful day, waiting and hoping and hurting for the Lord. Thanks be to God.